a brief statement and then feel free to put questions um, afterwards. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks, uh, Mr. Baker. A pleasant good morning to ladies and gentlemen of the media. As most of you would know, my name is Rodney Adams, Assistant Commissioner responsible for operations in the Royal Texas Cape Islands Police Force. Uh, we're here today to discuss our investigations thus far into the death of Ms. Mary Craig, which occurred sometime around the 25th of July of this year. I have Dr. Godfrey here with me, to my left, as indicated earlier by Mr. Baker, and also acting superintendent Kendall Charles, who is the acting head of CID here at Providentialis. So uh, we will take questions from you and move forward in that manner. Why, why um, was the need to, to even um, post this press conference? This is it the first time that we've seen a death and, um, and we are having a press conference and an autopsy? Why was there a need to do that this time around? Okay, uh, as you all are aware, as it relates to the unfortunate death of Ms. Craig, there have been a lot of speculation out in the community concerning uh, what might have happened. So we just wanted to set the record straight with the public in terms of updating you on where we are at in terms of the investigations going forward. Why you say investigations going forward, um, if the pathologist deemed that um, she died of a heart attack, what's to go forward? Well, he will be able to explain that in a bit as it relates to his side of the investigation. He is a part of the team, and there are other investigations that are still outstanding actions that we are following at the end of the day. Criminal investigations? Well, I'm not able to say that at this time. But we have an open mind. We're conducting our investigations and whatever is uncovered, the necessary our reports will be submitted uh, to AD Chambers or the coroner, and then we will know from there what is actually happening. Does the police feel like Ms. Craig's death was uh, attributed more than dog attacks or being frightened from seeing dogs chasing her? Well, it is not about what we feel. <coughs> it's about what investigations uncover. Thus far, there is nothing to indicate foul play thus far with our investigation. So the investigations, as I've indicated, are continuing, and whatever is uncovered is what will be reported. It's been two weeks since Craig's death. Of course, speculation has been out since ever since. Do you think this press conference should have been held a bit earlier? Well, there can be argument for and against. The, the bottom line is that we are here today to update the community on what is happening. One media house reported that Craig was found partially new. Can you speak to that? There definitely are. Uh, that is the case, and that is also a concern and uh, forming part of the investigations going forward. When you say partially new, then, can you break that down for us? What exactly? She, she had no clothing on, point blank. Were her clothes ever found? Some clothing was found, but to date we have not been able to conclude that those clothing was in fact hers. Checks have been made with family members, and to date they have not been able to say without a doubt that those clothing are in fact hers. <coughs> or not. I'm sorry. You say that you do not suspect um, foul play, uh, nothing to indicate foul play at this time. What do you think, again, it's the first time that somebody has died from what, what we thought was dog attacks and that we're having a press conference on it, the pathologists are here, assistant commissioner of police is here. There has to be more to it um, for there to even be, for us to even be here today. Our role is strictly to update the community is on what is happening with this investigation. It is something that we try to do from time to time, and that is strictly our role. It's not because of anything that we suspect one way or the other. Can the, can the doctor tell us if uh, the uh, woman had any history of prior heart disease and was on any kind of medication or anything <coughs> related to, to that? Uh, let me lay a little background for you before I address that, uh, that issue specifically. First of all, when we're doing death investigations, there are three key determinations that, that have to be made. Number one is the cause of death. Uh, number two is the manner of death. And number three is the mode of death. Normally, the mode of death is not even addressed because that is a physiologic uh, reaction and it's always the same. The heart stops moving. Where the questions come in are the manner and the cause of death. Now, a cause of death is what I do when I look at uh, a case and doing a post-mortem. I'm looking for specific 
injuries or anatomic uh, uh, problems that would have triggered death in the individual. The manner of death is also always addressed in some form, but the manner of death is not a medical um, uh, determination. It is a legal determination. In this particular, particular case, we know without a doubt what the manner, what the cause of death is. <clears throat> Where there are questions is because we're still working with the manner of death. All of the things that surround him, placing this poor lady in a situation where uh, where uh, she would pass away. That's what is uh, currently uh, under investigation. <clears throat> now you asked about her prior history. We have no records. <clears throat> excuse me. We have no records uh, uh, within our system that she has ever been seen at Chester Hall or at Grand Church at either one of the hospitals for any medical conditions. We do know that historically, some years ago, she was more than likely being seen for some type of medical condition uh, through the old Myrtle Rigby system. But those are old records, and that condition had long since resolved. Um, as far as any symptoms that she may have had, uh, the only thing that we can <clears throat> that we know for sure is that uh, that reportedly she had had some problems with uh, some shortness of breath and occasionally with chest pain, which would go along with what we have found uh, medically. And you, that was uh, anecdotal evidence from <coughs> relatives, or? relatives, daughters. Is there anything else that you found significant when conducting the autopsy? Yes. <clears throat> the actual cause of death for this lady is a heart attack. She had uh, narrowing of the coronary artery, the main coronary artery, uh, was narrowed by approximately 30%. There was a blockage in that artery. But on top of that, there was a what we call a fibrin thrombus, an acute clot that had formed over uh, the area of narrowing. Uh, when you see something like that, that is something that occurs very suddenly, and it causes a sudden arrhythmia, or irregular heartbeat, and that's the etiology of the heart, uh, uh, the heart attack in this uh, lady. Now, the questions are, what would uh, cause her heart rate to go up significantly to trigger this event when it wasn't occurring other than occasionally being symptomatic, possibly when uh, exerting herself at another time? That's something that is still up for investigation. Now, the issues uh, originally revolved around was she killed by dogs. No, she wasn't killed by dogs, but she was severely bitten by dogs. She had some lethal bites to her arms and to her legs. None of those bites reached uh, any deep vessels uh, enough to cause her to bleed to death. So these were sublethal injuries. She had multiple scratches on her body consistent with uh, dogs jumping on her. And, and the bites were before her death? Before they her were, uh, the best we can say is perimortem. Now perimortem could be uh, uh, 10 minutes before the heart stopped beating or up to five or 10 minutes after the heart, the heart stopped beating. That's as tight a window as you can get. But when you look at the <coughs> overall pattern of where the bites are, uh, it was at the time because, that she was going down because uh, dogs are not going to bite you in that particular pattern of biting uh, if you're just laying there unconscious all, uh, already. You say the cause of death has been determined, but the matter of death um, is it, pretty much still up for, for speculation. Um, can you elaborate for us? Well, uh, as I mentioned, <laughs> matter of death is a legal determination. It requires information that is developed by all uh, uh, sections of the forensic science police team. I am but one part of that. I generate data from the investigators from this perspective. There are other bits and pieces that are still coming together that are being uh, analyzed and collected by the officers involved. Once they get all of their pieces done, then that could very well change the matter of death. Right now, the only thing that has been issued is a preliminary, and if, if you've all seen the uh, uh, 
the early documents or any other cases, you'll see at the top it's marked preliminary versus final. Those preliminary investigations, those preliminary findings are primarily to generate quick but reliable information for the investigators to continue the ongoing. If something else comes up, that could very well, on the final uh, determination, result in a change in the manner of death. But right now, we're dealing with this as uh, a, uh, a cause of death natural, but it could be changed. When can we expect an updated report then? Well, uh, as far as the autopsy is concerned, uh, uh, it's final right now, but that is a part of the data that goes to the police force. Uh, I can't address how long this investigation is going to take. This would be the commission. Okay. Uh, as it relates to, as I've indicated earlier, the investigations are continuing, and it is exactly in line with what Dr. Godfrey has indicated as it relates to the manner of death. His role is to deal with the cause of death, and as he has indicated, he's a part of the team. And we put all of the pieces of the investigations together. In terms of a timeline, that might be difficult to say, because there, there are various examinations that still has to be carried out forensically. So I am hoping that within the next 30 days, at least, we can come back to the media with some form of update on progress with this investigation. Well, my query is just regarding the clothes. You, you said that she was found. You know, where were these clothes found, and, and were they female clothing that the police found? The clothing that was found, all indications are that they're female clothing, yes. Do they know that it's her? Sorry. Do they know that it's, so they know it's her clothing, though? No, no. They don't know that it's no, clothing. No, we don't they know that. found clothing fact. nearby? Okay, what I've said earlier, some clothing was found. Okay. Checks were made with the family. They have not been able to identify these pieces of clothing as far as. But she was new. Yes, she was. How far from her body were they found? The clothing, in fact, the body was not there at the time, but it was in the same vicinity that the clothing was found, the ones that I'm speaking about. And so the pants and the shirt, what exactly were they I'm not going to go into all of those details at this time. I'll leave it as clothing, okay? Give us a timeline for when Mary Craig was found. How long was she reported to say? At what time? And how was she discovered? I spoke with the father, and he said that police were at that very same location conducting a dog hunt. And they saw what they thought was a log of wood, and they stumbled upon her body. The report came in to us uh, earlier that morning. That would have been Wednesday, 25th. And uh, in terms of timeline, I think it would have been within about a two-hour timeline. Then somewhere she was around there. Then she was found. <coughs> And you say foul play isn't, isn't um, suspected? I did not say that. I say we are open-minded about the investigations. We don't have any reason to say one way or the other that it's suspicious. But at the end of the day, we are open-minded about it, and we have the chips fall, so we need it. Okay, I've also heard reports that her cell phone was missing. Is that true? That? Her cellular phone was missing. We, as far as I can recall, Mr. Charles, maybe you can update on that. I think all of the, the cell phone that we had raised some actions about that would have been located. Uh, can we yes, in that? relation to your question, uh, we still find out investigation to find out whether or not when she left home that evening, she had in her possession a cell phone. Okay. It is suggested that she always walk with a cell phone when she goes out walking. But that part of it is still on the investigation. Okay. Has, where, uh, has, has the police found her cell phone that she usually walks with? No, that was not found. Um, she was found um, nude. Um, although they were suspected, of course, that this was done by a dog at, at first, was there some sort of um, rape kit or anything done on this? <coughs> I'm certain that Dr. Godfrey will be more than happy to answer that, which will form part of any full postmortem examination, in particular when it comes to cases of this nature. Yes, there, there was a uh, rape kit examination done, but uh, uh, due to the state of decomposition, uh, the, uh, the samples are less than optimal. But yes, we did a complete examination to see if there was any injuries. Uh, consistent with uh, a sexual assault. We saw none. 
We collected samples uh, in an attempt to, uh, to uh, save those samples for DNA testing if it's determined that it's needed later on. Uh, I can tell you right now, due to the state of decomposition, uh, those samples will not be uh, viable. But there's nothing from their findings to indicate sexual disorder? No, no, no injuries, uh, no um, trace evidence, no foreign material uh, that would indicate that she was uh, assaulted in any way. Did the clothing have any kind of rips on it? Like maybe dogs had ripped the clothing off? Or were they, in, or were the clothes intact? With the clothing that the clothing that you kid. found near her, were there any like you know like dog teeth like it had been ripped off of her? Or? I I cannot say that at this time it is still okay. being uh, reviewed. In fact, that will have to be determined by an expert. Did it appear that way though? Did it I like I there cannot go by appearance. Were there, there rips? Facts. Were there any rips at all? I'm not able to say that at this time. Did she have any sort of um, forget the right word for it, but I, I guess watching CSI, you know, that they clean under your nails to see if there were any sort of defense marks and stuff like that. Did she have any I the forensic field and the media field <laughs> <laughs> was part of your homework. <laughs> yes, uh, um, I, and again, yes, we uh, we did uh, check that, but the, the reason that I'm smiling on this is because uh, uh, when uh, we looked at this uh, lady's uh, nails, uh, they were pretty much non-existent. They'd been chewed down. So I asked the daughter, I said, uh, did you really chew her fingernails? She said constantly, we were on her all the time, uh, that her mother would constantly chew on her nails. And uh, yes, we uh, we attempted, and yes, we have the swabs to show it, but uh, no, there wouldn't be anything re recoverable because the poor girl had literally eaten her nails away. And we know usually the body yes. the body is returned after an autopsy, if I'm correct. So will, will the body um, remain um, as part of police investigation until that is complete, or will it be returned to the family? Yeah, once an autopsy is completed, um, we are satisfied through the pathologist who is a part of the investigation team that <coughs> all the necessary samples has been taken. A uh, report is submitted to the coroner and the body is released to the family for burial. We know in some countries the media actually has some sort of access to the autopsy report. I'm assuming semi-detailed version. Why don't we have the same equipment this year? That is a policy issue that uh, that uh, you would have to look into uh, either with the police and or the office of the coroner. But again, once I generate uh, that report, the data and that report. Uh, is a document that will remain within the investigative circles until the case is finalized. Uh, we don't uh, we don't make those determinations. That would be the office of the coroner, be the courts. Okay, this is a general question. There has been some concern that. Um, the results of a number of autopsies performed recently came back, the cause of it came back as heart attack. Do you have any comment on that? Quite a few. Um, uh, we've had several where the only finding is uh, blocked coronary arteries. And that's not unusual. Uh, it's one of the most common causes of death back in the States also, heart attack. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the media, I certainly thank you for your time, and we will be getting back to, to you through Mr. Baker as it relates to any updates on this investigation. Thanks, and do have a blessed day.